You are listening to Unity in our community on Radio Cardiff 98.7 FM. And today I am very, very happy to welcome some brilliant guests who are here with me live in the studio. Um, First of all, Rebecca from Palestine Solidarity Campaign in Newport. Welcome. And Samaya, welcome to you too, who you are British Palestinian. So and you live in Cardiff. So welcome both of you. Yeah, we're going to dive in. So first of all, let me start off by saying that, um, you know, we want to talk about um, peace and nonviolence uh, against anybody, any human being, and um, maybe a little bit of a trigger warning for people if, you know, this is a sensitive subject for them. But I felt that it was very important to talk about and uh, express uh, ourselves as a group of women here in Wales um, and what is happening and how people can you know, get involved or um, help, basically. Um, And so let's first of all start with the the Palestinian Solidarity Campaign. How long has that been around? It's been around, I think, since the 1980s. Yeah. Um, There is an office in London and then there's branches all around the country. Um, So in Wales, there's about six branches, seven branches. It's growing all the time as people react to to what's happening and feel the need to do something um, about it. But very much, as you said, like the Palestine Solidarity Campaign is is for peace, equality and justice. Yeah. Um, And it's against racism, occupation and colonisation. Yeah. And that, to me, makes it an organisation I'm 100% on with. Yeah. and also, I can't dispute that. How can you dispute working together for peace, equality and justice? Yeah. Um, so at the moment, Palestinians don't have peace or equality or, or justice. So um, that's why we're campaigning for that. Yeah. Um, and so we believe if people get together, if we all use our voice, we use our voices collectively, then together we're so much stronger. We can support each other, mm-hmm. we can work together, and our voices are louder, so much louder. And sometimes you have to be loud enough that you're an embarrassment and you make people stand up and listen. And I think that's partly what last night was about, yeah. is people have talked reasonably and calmly, and now they're beginning to think, you're not listening, We and people yeah. are suffering yeah. terribly and dying yeah and we're in this very um unique kind of moment in history i think where we can all see what's happening on our phones which for me is it's never really happened before um you can see you know a lot of detail about how horrific the situation is right now um so yeah um so you want to talk a little bit about um yourself introduce yourself a little bit um Samaya and talk about your story um you live here in Cardiff and you're British citizen but obviously you're Palestinian as well so yes yeah Uh, thank you for having me today um as you said I'm British Palestinian uh, I have been in Cardiff for two and a half years, but before that, um, uh, I was up and down the country um, and and have quite fond memories in many um, of the English cities um, and towns. And uh, more recently, I've been very happy to call Cardiff home. Yeah. Uh, before um, coming to the UK, uh, I was born in Jordan. Okay. And uh, I came here 10 days old. Right. Uh, so this the reason why I was born in Jordan rather than born in Palestine is because I was denied that right to be born in Palestine. Okay. My father, uh, who has now passed, uh, was uh, born and raised all his life in Palestine, got his education uh, all the way up to 18 in Palestine. Um, and... Uh, in a city called Jenin, which is uh, in the news a lot these days. Um, Not as much as Gaza, of course. Mm. Uh, 
And uh, when he got to university age, he uh, applied to the School of Medicine in, at the University of Jordan. And he studied medicine in Jordan. As he left the um, borders between Palestine and Jordan, his ID, his Palestinian ID was taken off him um, on the border by Israel. Um, even though the, the borders in between Palestine and Jordan are Palestinian borders with Jordan, Jordanian borders, but those who control the borders are neither Palestinian or nor Jordanian. Um, and so his ID was stripped off him. And uh, later on in the year, uh, he was given, and, and a lot of people at the time were given the um, ultimatum of either returning within a certain specific days to take back their ID or lose it forever. At the time, um, my father wasn't the richest of people. Um, uh, he was a, a, a student who was barely, uh, you know, making ends meet um, and wasn't able to make the deadline, which was an unfair deadline altogether mm. and a very short and narrow window. Um, having exams at the um, going on in the same period as well. So he lost his Palestinian ID. His okay. parents were trapped on, on uh, or he was trapped out, let's say, of Palestine. His parents, his my, my aunties, my uncles, my cousins. So he was cut off from the rest of the family. Yes, and ended up in, in Jordan. He married my mother um, in Jordan um, we, and had me as their first child in Jordan. Ten days later, we were in Birmingham. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, was that because he had qualified as a doctor and he was coming to work as a doctor? Yes. He was a consultant radiologist and one, is one of the finest in the UK. Okay. Yeah. So one of, those, so uh, <laughs> one of those um, amazing people that come here and add a lot of value to our society and, you know, bring their skills to the NHS. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He was very um, passionate about the NHS. Yeah. Very, very passionate. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think we all are um, passionate about the NHS as well because it's such a a thing that we all rely on, you know. Um, so th thank you for sharing that um, that story. And what, what brought you to make your home in Cardiff? Um, so uh, we, uh, my husband found a job in, in at Cardiff University. Mm. Um, and uh, he was developing um, Alzheimer's drugs right. to improve um, uh, patients' lives um, and life experiences uh, during Alzheimer's and late-stage Alzheimer's. Um, and so uh, we moved to Cardiff. It was, mm. um, it was uh, one of the best decisions that we made because we love Cardiff so much. Yeah. We love Wales so much. Yeah, it is a lovely city. Um, and I think that, you know, I've been really... Um, you know, following events, you know, with this situation at the moment and, you know, watching uh, every every week, like everybody turning up, you know, in solidarity uh, and having the weekly uh, protests which are going on around the country. And I know there's going to be a big one again on Saturday. Um, so, so, yeah. Um, and obviously it's very distressing for all of us to... Um, to kind of be in this situation that makes you feel like you're well you are technically being gaslit you know a lot of the time um by politicians um and people not really you know saying the truth and obviously there's been this um international court of justice you know um and legal um proceedings going on to try and you know halt the the atrocities that are happening uh, at the moment, and um, I'm obviously I think there's been something new happen recently. Um, as obviously there's a lot of people trapped in one area, and um, I think that um, South Africa has again gone back to see if they can. Do you know? Do you know what what's happening with that, Rebecca? Um, I know that um, South Africa initially took um, a case to the International Court of Justice, which is the UN court, um, to say that they believed there was genocide. Um, and they laid out their case very clearly, very succinctly, the need to prove that there's intent and that some of the actions taken are 
under the definition of genocide. And there was a powerful enough case that um, the International Court of Justice have done an interim ruling. So, and the interim ruling says things like um, that um, Israel must not do anything that's genocidal, it must prosecute anybody who um, says anything genocidal, who encourages genocide, and the UK has a responsibility, like all governments signed up to the 1948 Genocide Convention, yeah. to say that they will prevent genocide and not mm. be complicit in it. Mm. So... You were saying quite rightly just then that there's an area where a lot of people are, and that's called Rafa. Um, forgive my pronunciation, but it's called Rafa. Um, and so South Africa are now saying that if Israel was to invade Rafa, where there's over one and a half million people in tents with nothing, being denied food, being denied water, being denied medical assistance, that would put Israel in further breach of the International Court of Justice. Mm. Um, into a measure. W would you agree with that um, summation? Yes. Samaya? Yes, very yeah. much. And I and I actually have a um, a few messages that arrived from someone in in uh, Rafah um, uh, over the past two days. I have a friend. Well, I have a number of friends there. Some of them um, who I shared, whom, who my sisters, um, younger sisters, shared uh, a classroom with, who have uh, been killed in Rafah mm. um, uh, in Gaza. I'm sorry. Um, thank you. Uh, and I have uh, some messages from a uh, a friend who um, used to work in a hospital in the north of Gaza. Uh, her home is in Rafah originally, so uh, but sh but her family home has been um, receiving uh, people who have been displaced from the north of Gaza into Rafah, um, and so the the their home holds more than a hundred people. Wow! Um, in in the that single. Uh, space mm. that was already quite um, tight for the extended family who had all gathered in the same home. Mm. Um, she was saying, and I'm, if, if you don't mind, I'm going to read straight off my phone That's her okay. message um, and translate. Uh, she she said to me, um, "Pray for us, pray for us so much because I feel like my heart is going to stop." Last night was uh, really terrifying, to the extent of which I can't. Uh, describe the problem is with what is coming what are we going to do uh, everything points out uh, points in the direction that they're going to enter Rafah uh, in, in any case and I think that it's going to be the one of the worst and more, most difficult things that ha uh, will happen in the Gaza Strip uh, they want to uh, achieve their victory from Rafah because it wasn't possible elsewhere I swear I can't take a breath my heart is only working uh, it, 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 laboriously I feel that my body is going to stop from uh, from the fear and forgive me this is instant translation and I'm not an expert in instant translation but she's also saying that um I'm so terrified I can't live like this and I can't live uh, another night like the night that has just passed. Our hearts are weaker than to to uh, be able to bear anymore. I wish that I had I didn't have a a, a husband or a, or children to uh, be afraid for. I th I I wish that it was just me that I needed to worry about and I wasn't worrying about anyone else. Please pray for us. 